delighted to welcome Labour's Shadow Foreign Secretary, Labour MP uh, Lisa Nandy to the show. Good morning to you. Good morning. Um, does the government uh, policy right now, is that is that endorsed by the Labour Party in terms of us having a curfew on pubs and restaurants, telling people to work from home once again and any other measures we're likely to hear from the Prime Minister today? Does the Labour Party endorse that? Well, I, th- I think the measures that the government's outlined so far are fairly sensible. They sound sensible, but they're by no means sufficient. Just down the road from me um, in Bolton, the the, par- the pubs, bars and restaurants have had these restrictions placed on them already. They've been enforced for several weeks, but we've also seen uh, infections continuing to rise. So it's clear there's going to have to be more from the government. It's very difficult to, to second guess what that ought to be. They haven't shared the evidence with us or with the public. We don't know where this infection is spreading, whether it's in households, whether it's because of people um, going to work or whether it's because of people going out socialising. So until the Prime Minister turns up to the House of Commons and sets that out, it's very difficult to say what should happen next. But it's certainly clear from what the scientists were saying yesterday that the infection rates are rising and we've got to do more to get a grip on this virus. Well, indeed, infection rates are rising, although there's some big question marks about some of the graphs and some of the evidence that was given by Patrick Valance and, uh, Hugh, and uh, Chris Whitty yesterday. Um, but we know that uh, cutting, you know, cutting off service in pubs and restaurants at 10pm, we've just been speaking to Kate Nichols, the Chief Executive of UK Hospitality, that will actually be, I mean, a death knell for an awful lot of, uh, of, of small businesses and an awful lot of jobs as well uh, in that sector in terms of having only one sitting in a restaurant having to stop uh, having new customers in at nine o'clock halved capacity already we could see mass job losses uh, in that sector Uh, do you think that's worth it well that, that is precisely the reason why we've been saying to the government you have got to target support to particular industries not just a one size fits all approach to supporting jobs and supporting businesses but but actually taking particular industries and sitting down with them and working out what support they need. If businesses have to, if pubs have to go through further restrictions, there will be job losses unless the government steps up and supports them. There's a cafe in the office that I run, in the building of the office that I run in Wigan for my constituents, where uh, the, the woman who runs it believes that she is going to have to close that with the loss of jobs. At some point, those businesses will all return to work um, and we know that we'll need a cafe there. It's extremely short-sighted not to support businesses like that. Everyone will do what it takes to get through this virus, but they want to know that the government is there and supporting them through it. And what they most of all want to know is that we're getting a grip on the test, trace and isolate system because we've had a wasted summer and in the end, the only way through this is to know where the virus is, to be able to trace the people that... Um, those who've got it have come into contact with. Otherwise, you lose a grip of this, as we've seen over the last few months. And what do you make of the government bringing in, as we announced uh, over the the, the weekend, these £10,000 fines for people who repeatedly refuse to self-isolate after getting a, a positive COVID result or possibly being a close contact with someone who has, um, and being told basically, you know, if you don't do what you're supposed to do, we will fine you. Do you have any sympathy for the people who you know, don't get paid if they don't go to work? You say, I simply can't afford, not just to not get paid but possibly even lose my job if I don't go to work yeah and I think you know that's the reason why it's very important for the police and others to have proper guidance very clear guidance about how they enforce this the government has to make sure that they do their part and provide support to people so that they don't suffer greatly including you know families suffering because they um, can't afford to go to work I think it's fair for the government to say that for those people Uh, There was a case in Bolton, there's been another in Wales, who are just deliberately flouting the rules that there have to be repercussions. My worry is that unless you provide support to people who would otherwise lose their jobs, then people will find it impossible to comply with the guidance. So as well as enforcement, as well as the stick, we need to provide the support to people so that they can actually comply. And most of all, we've got to get a grip of the testing system because if people can get access to a test, um, then it removes the need to self-isolate for several weeks at a time and we can get people back to work and get the economy back up and running much more quickly. Um, You talked about a lot of extra help there for lots of different sectors, um, including some of the hardest hit sectors like the entertainments and, uh, and, and pubs and restaurants industries. What price tag have you got on that? Well, it it, it depends what the government decides to do. If you remember at the beginning of this crisis, the Chancellor was roundly applauded for sitting down with the TUC and the CBI, with employers and employees' bodies, and working out a package of support, the furlough scheme, 
um, and support for business that would make sure that people didn't lose their jobs unnecessarily through this crisis. But since then, that, that approach has just disappeared. We haven't seen any real attempt from the government to reach out to industry, to sit down with those affected and say, what is it that you actually need? So we've seen money wasted um, through things like the job retention scheme, which doesn't seem to have had much of an impact um, but has cost a great deal of money, while at the same time there are some industries that are obviously affected, pubs, bars and restaurants are the, the clear one today where they're facing further restrictions. There are spokespeople out for the industry saying this is going to be the nail in the coffin for many of those businesses and many jobs lost and that's where support should be targeted. So it's not a question of writing a blank cheque, but it is a question of getting a very clear strategy based on what those industries need and what those employees need. And um, we just haven't seen it from the government. Well, we're going to be hearing from you later today at this uh, conference, but also Sir Keir Starmer, your leader, and uh, his uh, speech is being billed as uh, vowing to turn Labour into the party of security, making big breaks with the Corbyn era. You were one of the uh, the few people on the front bench time who, who actually was speaking out against Jeremy Corbyn uh, and uh, and his leadership. The new the new slogan, you know, new leadership uh, as well. Um, how much do you think you're going to be able to persuade those red wall voters, so called red wall voters across the north? in the Midlands of this country who moved over to vote for the Tories, particularly on the Brexit issue as well, and also concerns about Corbyn's leadership. How much do you think you're going to be able to persuade them to come back to the Labour fold? What do you have to say to them to win them back over? Well, we've got a big job of work to do and there's a you know, huge effort that is required to win back people's trust. I think they need to hear from us that we'll put their security up front and centre, their national security. I think people want to hear from Labour and understand and see that we will stand up for Britain um, and um, defend people, support people uh, against attacks from abroad. But they also want to see that we'll put their family security, their economic security first. I remember a few years ago, a woman in Wigan rang me up during the 2017 election and said to me, don't... Um, don't promise, Lisa, what you can't deliver. And I said to her, well, no, I, I completely agree with that. And she said, because it's our money and we haven't got a lot of it. You know, what you'll hear from Keir Starmer today is that we want to invest in public services. We want this country to be more ambitious for the future of its young people and its older people. But we are going to be careful with people's money. We're going to be careful with their security. We're going to work with them in order to deliver on their priorities. And I think people are receptive to that message after 10 years 10 lost years under the Tories. I think people know Britain can be better than this, and that is what Keir will set out today. OK, uh, Lisa Nandy, Shadow Foreign Secretary, thank you very much for joining us. She's actually in a, a, a hallway, so apologies for the uh, loud banging noises in the background there. Thank you very much for joining us. Quick word from Benedict Spence, who's a political commentator, joining us today. Uh, pretty hard, actually, for, I think, Labour to get a look in right now when people are so concerned about you know what's happening to their livelihoods, their their, their family and, and their businesses, their jobs and the like. Uh, but um, um, Sir Keir Tom is definitely fighting a valiant fight to uh, rebrand re Labour, isn't he? He is. Um, I, I suppose I wish him well after everything that's happened over the last few years. Um, I, I suppose, though, actually, you'd have to say the strategy isn't going too badly. You know, Labour's numbers are picking up slowly, yeah. and they're doing that by just not saying silly things, silly controversial things that alienate their core voters, and just trying not to rock the boat. That's not necessarily providing you know, fantastic opposition, but as part of the rebuilding exercise that needs to be undergone, I suppose you'd say that's necessary. Yeah, indeed. And again, we've seen a massive, massive change in the polls uh, in, in recent weeks even. So we shall uh, see about that.